The Seven Kingdoms of Westeros have long been ruled by a few major houses, constantly vying against each other for greater wealth and power. Yet these great and ancient houses do not act alone. They are aided by dozens of minor houses who play their own games of court, and sometimes even rebel against their liege lords. The lords of House Magnar of King's House rule the reclusive island of Skagos, found far to the north in the Bay of Seals. Though they are officially vassal lords to House Stark of Winterfell, in practice there is little contact between the Skagosi and the mainland. The men of Skagos are said to be barbaric tribesmen who eat the flesh of their dead. Skagosi, also called Stoneborn, are said to perform human sacrifices to the old gods, and they have risen several times in revolt against the Starks, with each war being costly, forcing the Winter Kings to sacrifice countless lives in order to keep them as a nominal territory. It is said Skagos is home to unicorns and shaggy horse-like beasts that can climb mountains and walls. Making their home in the mountains north of the Wolfswood, the ancient northern mountain clans have been fiercely loyal to House Stark for thousands of years. They are said to be reclusive and primitive tribesmen who practice the old customs and traditions of the north. The most prominent clans of the northern mountains are the First Flints, the Wolves, the Norries, the Burleys, the Harclays, the Liddells, and the Knots. They are known to be tremendous warriors and can feel two to three thousand men. An ancient house loyal to the Winter Kings of House Stark, it is said King Roderick Stark annexed Bear Island from the Ironborn after winning it in a wrestling match. He then awarded it to House Mormont, who has ruled ever since. J.R. Mormont, Lord of Bear Island, fought under the Stark banners during Robert's rebellion, before moving off to join the Night's Watch, where he would rise to Lord Commander. His son Jorah Mormont would inherit their ancestral home and earn fame for himself, fighting for the Stark banners in the Greyjoy Rebellion. However, he soon was exiled from the kingdom for selling poachers into slavery, and though House Mormont remains loyal to the Starks, Ser Jorah has changed his personal allegiance to the exiled House Targaryen. Thousands of years before the Andal invasion, the lords of House Bolton ruled as Red Kings in the north, carving out a kingdom from the surrounding lands of the Dreadfort. Yet after centuries of war with the Winter Kings of House Stark, the last Red King, Rogar Bolton, called Rogar the Huntsman, bent the knee to Winterfell and the Stark Kings. House Bolton was infamous for flaying their victims, and it was rumored that they once wore the skins of flayed Stark Lords. Though they publicly agreed to end the practice, rumors say they continue to flay their enemies in secret in the dungeons of the Dreadfort. A thousand years before Aegon's Landing, House Manderley ruled the rich and fertile territory along the Mander River in the Kingdom of the Reach. However, the Green Kings of House Gardner had them exiled, and they fled, friendless and in fear for their lives. Facing the possible extinction of their house, it was only by the generosity and mercy of House Stark that the Manderleys survived. The Winter Kings made them bannermen and gave them a territory known as Wolfsten, where they would build a port city named White Harbor and would prosper into a strong and fiercely loyal Northern House. They are one of the few Northern Houses to worship the Seven rather than the Old Gods. Descended from the First Men, the ancient and reclusive Cranogmen of the Neck have been ruled by House Reed for thousands of years. Though they were once ruled by the Marsh Kings and were allied with the Children of the Forest, working with ancient magic and being guided by prophetic Greenseers, they long ago bent the knee to House Stark and have since served as loyal bannermen to the Winter King. Their traditional enemies are House Frey, who control the territory just south of the Neck. House Frey was founded six centuries ago when an upstart nobleman built his fort on the crossing of the River Trident, dividing the north from the Riverlands and the south. This strategically located crossing would make House Frey one of the richest families in the kingdom, and though they owe their allegiance to House Tully of the Riverlands, they are known to serve their own interests above all else. Their traditional enemies are the Cranog Men of the Neck. The proud and savage mountain clans of the Vale are descendants of the First Men who refused to submit to Andal authority and instead fled to the mountains where they would live as nomadic raiders, maintaining their ancient customs and traditions. 
The clansmen believe every man is born equal, and therefore every man has the right to be heard in the running of the clan or the planning of wars. The best known clans of the Vale are the Black Ears, known for taking ears from their enemies as trophies. The Burned Men, who burn a part of their bodies when they come of age to prove their martial strength. The Howlers, the Milk Snakes, the Moon Brothers, the Painted Dogs, the Red Smiths, the Sons of the Mist, the Sons of the Tree, and the Stone Crows. Tracing their lineage back to the empire of Old Valyria, House Valerion, of the island of Driftmark, had been loyal bannermen to House Targaryen for hundreds of years. Allied since the days of the Old Empire, House Valerion were a strong naval power that joined Aegon the Conqueror in his invasion of Westeros. Their close Targaryen ties have seen them intermarrying several times. House Valerion, with the infamous Valyrian features of silver hair and purple eyes, were loyal to the Targaryens, sending men with Rhaegar Targaryen against Robert Baratheon at the Battle of the Trident during Robert's Rebellion. One of the most famous figures in their history was Lord Corlys Valerion, called the Sea Snake, who led fantastic ship voyages to the far side of the world, visiting the lands of Yidi and Leng. Through these voyages, he made his house exceedingly rich, and for a time, House Valerion became the richest family in the continent, surpassing even the great wealth of House Lannister. When House Targaryen is destroyed, they ally with House Baratheon and the Stormlands. House Tarth rules over Evanfall Hall on the island of Tarth, sometimes called the Sapphire Island for its beautiful blue waters. Sworn bannermen to the Baratheons of the Stormlands, they control the Straits of Tarth in Shipbreaker Bay, and they make their living off sea trade. One of the most powerful houses of the Reach, House Tarly is a warlike family seated at Horn Hill in the foothills of the Red Mountains. They are the keepers of a Valyrian greatsword named Heartsbane and control rich, fertile lands. They are known to be fearsome warriors, loyal to their liege lords in House Tyrell. Their martial prowess is evident during Robert's Rebellion, when Lord Randall Tarly led Targaryen forces into one of their only victories in the war. Every territory of the Seven Kingdoms has a unique name given to the bastard-born children of nobles in those lands. In the north, they are Snow. In the Riverlands, Rivers. In the Iron Islands, Pike. In the Vale, Stone. The Crown Lands, Waters. The Westerlands, Hill. In the Reach, Flowers. The Stormlands, Storm. And the Southern Realm of Dorne, call them Sand. Though bastards have no inheritance rights, several bastards and bastard houses have risen to prominence over the centuries. House Blackfire, the bastard Targaryen line started by the famed Daemon Blackfire, attempted to claim the throne several times during the reign of Daeron the Good and his successors. Examples of other notable bastards include Brynden Rivers, called Bloodraven, who served as Hand of the King and Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Aegor Rivers, known as Bittersteel, who aided in the Blackfire rebellions and started the mercenary group, the Golden Company, in Essos. As well as Ramsay Snow, Jon Snow, and the Sand Snakes of Dorne. 